All right, everyone, welcome to episode three of Rip and Flip, the series where we buy used mountain bikes on the cheap, give them a rip, see how well they ride, and then see if we can flip them for profit. This time we've got a 2015 Norco Range Enduro bike, 160 millimeters of front and rear travel. We picked it up for just 540 bucks. It was listed for 600, but when I went to pick it up, it, uh, didn't have a working dropper post. So I did pump up the dropper post. It uh, ended up working, but it was only 125 mil of travel. So I swapped it for a longer 150 travel bike, travel uh, travel dropper. Um, set up the tires tubeless, tuned the suspension for me. And uh, yeah, this is actually gonna be my third ride on it, but first with the all the changes. So let's see how well she does. All right, it's 95 degrees out. I'm wearing a full face because one of the chin camera mount on the way downhill you guys are welcome so let's talk about climbing this thing for a second it climbs better than i expected it's got a 1 by 10 sram gx drivetrain shifts really well um even under load feels pretty solid so happy with the shifting now the uh body position is what i'm struggling with on the climbs these older bikes had much slacker seat tubes so even though this reach is actually kind of short compared to a modern bike. When I'm sitting, it feels like I'm way too far away from the handlebars. So, it's like my feet are in front of my hips and then I'm like extending my arms all the way out to be able to reach the bars. So it's just kind of an uncomfortable climbing position, but if I force myself to get over the front, still can lay power down. So, quick rundown on what I've done to this bike so far. Uh, first thing, the front hub had a ton of play in it when I first got it. So after my first ride, I uh, took the bolts off, found that the ball bearings were all in the wrong spot. So packed it full of grease, got all those reset correctly, tightened it down. Front end's nice and tight now. Um, didn't do any service to the suspension, just tuned it properly and that made it feel way better after the first ride. Um, I set up the tires tubeless. Um, there was a hole in the rear tire, so I had to put a bacon strip in, but I'm still more confident in that tubeless with the with plug versus having the tubes in it because I did flat the front after my first ride. And then, uh, yeah, I swapped out the 125 mil dropper for 150. And I also swapped out the saddle for one that's less comfortable, but it's a skinny road saddle, so it's more out of the way because 150 mil drop still isn't that much. So those are the changes we've made so far. It's riding great. Let's take this 2015 Norco range down Maple Hollow DH. Ooh, rear brake's making some weird noises. Ooh, a little squirrely on the front end. These are super tight corners, so it probably looks lame, but short wheelbase feels good on jumps. Okay, we got a slightly warped rotor. So you might be hearing some noise, but still feels good. Oh, short wheelbases are so fun. This thing's perfect for trails like this. Whew. Honestly, for 540 bucks, this is insane. To have a pike, 170, 160 mil travel front and rear. Thing feels amazing. It's in real good condition too. Four piston brakes front and rear. Maxxis DHFs. So playful. I'm gonna stop and try and fix that noise though. Ooh, that's not good. Might need another plug. I assumed this was a 
the little spot that I had to fix yesterday. But there's a little twig in there. Uh, conveniently, this is actually a pump that came already on the bike. Didn't think I would need it after only a couple rides. Well, it's holding for now. I don't have a knife to cut that off, so hopefully it stays. Glad I had a plug, glad I had this pump. I have a spare tube as well, but I hate changing tubes. I think the brake is fixed. Hopefully that tire holds. Time to get into the jump section. I'll oh, case that one. There we go. Phew. My first bike, I guess my first bike was a cheap hardtail, but my first like proper mountain bike was a 2015, excuse me, 2014 Kona Process 153. This thing feels exactly like that. It's kind of the same size as the Kona, same fork, similar geometry. I think the suspension was a little nicer on my Kona, but these brakes are a little better, this drivetrain feels better. I'm also just a better rider now, but yeah, I'm stoked on this thing. Oh, tight corner there. But yeah, insane to get a bike this nice for 540 bucks. Bikes have been nice for a while now, so the used deals are crazy. Great time to be getting into the sport. These tires are bad, man. I mean, they're fine, but I'm just used to more grip. Keep slamming my camera into my bars. Sorry guys. Let's do the double in the middle. Got my rebound a little too fast in the rear, so I feel like I'm getting bucked a bit, but we're getting back. It's good. So it's actually been a couple months since I recorded all that footage. Did end up selling the bike. I had it listed for 700 for probably like four or five weeks. Someone offered me 600 for it. And then I negotiated them down to 570 because I needed to ride to the airport. So yeah, didn't really make money on this one. Uh, an Uber to the airport was going to be like 50 bucks. So knocking off 30 bucks off the price to get a ride to the airport when he picked up the bike was a uh, was profitable for me, but yeah, this was a, this was a fun one. If you're new to biking, definitely worth spending a few hundred bucks on an old enduro bike.